from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. George Reed speaking. Oh, good morning, George. Is it? Well, sure. The birds are singing, the bees are buzzing. And there are whales in the Gulf of Mexico. Oh, there are. What? You know anything about whales, Johnny? Can't say that I do. Well, neither do I. Neither does our agent down in Gulfport, Mississippi. Can you go down there? Well, yeah, sure, but what's this all about? I told you. A whale. Oh, come on. You people didn't insure it. Now, George. Oh, Johnny, of course we didn't. But we did write a floater policy covering 80 pounds of amber gris. Amber who? Gris comes from a whale. Uh -huh. Very valuable, used in the making of perfume. Oh, yeah. We issued the policy a week ago. Yesterday, the stuff disappeared. How much did you cover it for? 20000 And our agent down there is W.C. Owen. Got it? Owen, huh? Yes. You really shouldn't have any trouble locating the stuff. No? Why not? Because, and I quote Mr. Owen... Ambergris smells worse than a hound dog, which has caught a skunk. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, Act One of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Floyd's of England American Branch Office, 443 North 15th Street, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Michael Meany Mirage matter. Expense account item one, $168. Transportation from Hartford to the Markham Hotel in Gulfport, Mississippi. I called W.C. Owen, the agent who had sold the policy covering the ambergris. Half an hour later, I opened the door of my room to a middle-aged man wearing a brown seersucker suit. Mr. Dollar, is that right? Sure is. Come on in, Mr. Owen. Come on. In. Thanks, thanks. Well, Dollar, I'm not going to fool around about this. I'm in a mess, and you're my only chance of getting out of it. Well, I'll do whatever I can, Mr. Owen. You just find that ambergris. And, man, please find it within the next 48 hours. Oh, why the rush? Two reasons. When the ambergris was stolen off the freight platform at the train depot day before yesterday, it was packed for shipping. Had enough dry ice around it to last 72 hours, but no more. Uh-huh. Now, what's the second reason? That Mike Meany. Who's he? Owner of the Ambergris, and a real good client of mine. I promised him you'd locate the stuff for sure. Well, I appreciate your confidence, Mr. Owen. Name's W.C. Mr. Around here sounds too highfalutin for an insurance salesman. Okay, W.C. But what's this fellow Meany so worried about? The Ambergris is covered for 20000 He told me he'd learned it's worth a lot more than that since the floater was issued. Something up near 60000 Pretty rare stuff. It is. Matter of fact, this is the first time I've ever heard of anybody finding ambergris in the Gulf. Who fished him out of the water? Meany? No, a young fellow worked for him named Billy Fisher. Did Meany buy it from Fisher? Didn't have to. Belonged to Mr. Meany right off. Oh, why's that? Well, because Fisher works for him. Mr. Meany lets out his fishing boats to fellas, which ain't got no boat of their own, or even a chance of getting one. He rents them out, you mean? No, he don't rent them. He lets them out on share. Mr. Meany puts up the boat, gas, nets, everything. And whoever runs the boat, well, he... Whatever he catches, he belongs to Mr. Meany. Oh, and uh, because Fisher happened to be in Meany's boat when he found the Abergris, it automatically became Meany's property, huh? Now you got it, boy. Uh-huh. Did Fisher know what it was or the value of it when he turned it over to Meany? Well, you have to ask him about that. Yeah, I plan to. But first, I'd like to have a talk with this Mike Meany. I'm way ahead of you, Dollar. I called Meany right after you called me. He's waiting for us. How far does he live from here? Oh, about three or four miles down the beach road toward Biloxi. Place called Mississippi City. Mississippi City? Uh-huh. But don't let the name fool you. Ain't nothing there except a couple of stores, fishing boat landing, and the train depot. Uh, sounds like a real quiet place. It is. It's also where this whole thing started and where I hope it finishes. And the sooner, the better. A few minutes later, we were driving east along the coast. Ahead of us, we could see Mississippi City's one and only landmark, a long wooden pier extending far out into the gulf. Anchored near the end of it were several small fishing boats. We passed the Meany General Store and the Meany Fish Market, then turned into a narrow driveway. I'm not sure what kind of a house I'd expected Mike Meany to live in, but this certainly wasn't it. It was too small and it needed a coat of paint. We got out and no one led the way to the side porch. Mr. Meany, you at home? Doesn't look like he is. 
No, no, he's here. Listen. What in the name of... Sure, heavy, ain't he? Yes, sir. Ain't another man his size in the whole United States. Good night, I believe it. W.C. boy, you sure took your sweet time getting here. Yeah. Well, I made it just as yeah. fast as we could, Mr. Meany. Mm. Uh, this is the fellow I was telling you about, Mr. Johnny Dollar. Uh, both of you come inside. That's it, come on in. You men sit down on the sofa. I'll just lower, uh, lower myself into this, uh, this here, uh, chair. There. Yeah, now then. You're a detective, huh, Dollar? Well... Well, then, me ain't giving me an answer. You're a detective or you ain't a detective. Now, which is it? I'm an insurance investigator. Right now, I'm being paid to find 80 pounds of ambergris that you lost. Lost? Lost? You didn't mean nothing by saying that. You hush up, you you road agent. Mr. Meany... Dollar, that stuff was stolen, you hear? Thieved. Right in the broad light of day. You're sure? Well, I'm sure 80 pounds of ambergris didn't get up and walk off by itself. Yes, sir. Me too. But, you know, exactly where was it when it was stolen? Well, sitting in a box I had built for it, a special bo- box. Box? Smell-proof. Cost $25. Oh, shut up. I was sending it to New Orleans to a fella I'd heard might be able to sell it for me. And the box was on the platform... <laughs> Right outside the American Express office of the depot. Here in Mississippi City? Boy, you ever take a bad fall out of your cri- crib? No, you ignorant in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Where do you think that depot was? Well, it could have been in Gulfport. No, it could not never do business there. Okay, okay, so I'm wrong. No, but that's the first time you ever admitted it. <sighs> Had the box been checked in at American Express? You mean, had the freight been paid in New Orleans? Yes, that's what I mean. That scrounge and ignorant, no good. Had it been paid, Mr. Meany? No, it hadn't. Why not? Because the rat I trusted with the Amber Grissom sent down to the station to see it got on the train. Yeah? He'd promise. He'd give his word. He wouldn't take his eyes off that stuff for one second. <laughs> that dirty. That North Yeah. Are you okay, Mr. Meany? No, but you sit down. You make me nervous, don't you see? Yes, sir. Every time I think of that, T.J., that stupid nephew of mine, well, you know what he done, Dollar. He spotted something more interesting to look after than $20,000 worth of ambergris. Ambergris. Okay, who was she? She... Oh, W.C. told you. No, I didn't. No, sir. Mr. Dollar, he, he's just clever. Yeah, well, anyway, according to T.J., this young female pulled up in an open car across from the road from where he was at, and it, it wasn't until he got up close that he could see that she was wearing a, a strapless bathing suit. You see, Mr. Dollar, T.J. He thought... He knows no. what T.J. thought you, Miss Boo. You keep your mouth shut, W.C. Well, whatever you say, Mr. Well, Mr. well while T.J. was investigating the uh, situation, uh, someone made off with the ambergris. Is that right? Right. Well, what about the other people at the station? There weren't no other people there. How about the baggage clerk and the passenger agent? Where were they? They? Sam Burroughs is the only man that works down the depot, and he was busy selling some woman a Pullman ticket to Memphis. How long did T.J. talk to the girl? Just a couple of minutes, according to him, that is. Uh, you want to ask him yourself. He works at the all-night cafe in Gulfport. All right, thanks. Well, we sure haven't much to go on. You got nothing to go on. So you might as well give me my 20000 and head back up north. Where you belong. Blong. Not yet, Mr. Meany. You got 45 hours. At the end of that time, I want my insurance money. Money. You don't see that I have it, Mr. W.C. Owen. You're going to be sorry. You know what I mean? Mean? Yes, sir. I know. Owen didn't say another word until we'd pulled out of Fat Mike Meany's driveway and had turned left going on down the beach toward Biloxi. I suppose you think I should have stood up to him a little more, huh? No, I, I figured you had your reasons for not wanting to get into an argument with him. See those boats off the end of the pier? The small fishing boats, uh huh. Well, they belong to Meany. He's also got money invested in half the business place along the beach. You know what that means, Dollar. Yeah, well, where I come from, he'd pull a lot of weight. That's it. 
than anybody he gets riled at. Well, one word from him and a good many of my clients would be screaming for me to cancel their policies. Like that, huh? Just like that. Hey, where are we going? Billy Fisher's. This way, this here's the boarding house he lives in. Come on. Uh-oh. Okay, boy. Okay. Easy now. Easy, easy. That's it. Good boy. Good boy. Afternoon, Miss Harvey. Oh, well, my goodness, Miss Owen, this is an unexpected pleasure for sure. Why, thank you, ma'am. Uh, this here is Mr. Johnny Dollar, Miss Harvey. Afternoon. Pleased to know you, Mr. Dollar. Wouldn't you like to come in and sit down? No, thanks. We really don't have much time. Oh? Mr. Dollar is an insurance investigator. Right now, he wants to have a talk with Billy Fisher, providing his home. Why, sure he is. you find him round the side there. Oh, but... Yes, sir? Well, he's with Jane Higgins, Miss Owen. Jane Higgins. Oh, you know her pa rented that old Miller place again. The girl that got Billy into that trouble. Oh, oh, yes. What, uh, what kind of trouble, Mrs. Harvey? Well, it happened when the Higginses were down here two years ago. Billy and Jane have always been sweet on each other. But being as Billy is Billy and doesn't have the fang of his own, not even a job except fishing one of Mr. Meany's boats. Well... Jane's pa just put his foot down. <laughs> but didn't mean a thing to Billy. No, sir. At least not until old man Higgins got a sheriff out. <laughs> that still didn't stop Jane. <laughs> and finally, the Higginses just packed up. They didn't come back until just three weeks ago Saturday. How old is the Higgins girl now? Oh, he's 19. And she hasn't changed one bit in those two years. No, sir. She's just over here all the time. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be some fur fine when her paw finds oh, out. <laughs> there they are now. Billy? James! Hi. Come over here a minute, Billy. Someone wants to see you. Sure. Billy? Now this here's Mr. Dollar. Hi. Howdy. Uh, Miss Higgins, Mr. Dollar, and Miss Owen. Uh, Hello, Miss Higgins. Are you? Billy, I wonder if I could speak to you alone for a moment, huh? Yes, sir. What did you want to talk to me about? Mr. Meany and the ambergris you found. Oh, that. Where did you find it, Billy? Out near Cat Island, floating in the East Channel. Uh Uh-huh. Did you know what it was as soon as you saw it? No, sir, not exactly. But I read a story once about a fellow that found some ambergris, and he sure made a lot of money off it. So you weren't going to take any chances, and you hauled it aboard, is that right? Uh, Yes, sir. Something like that. Billy, you realized that anything you caught or salvaged with that boat uh, belonging to Mr. Meany, uh, it wasn't yours. You realized that, didn't you? Well, not right then. I didn't know, sir. He gave me some kind of a contract to sign when I started working for him, but I never read it. Well, what happened when you put in at the pier that night? Well, that Cliff Stillinger, Mr. Meany's checker, he spied the ambergris right off, and he made me turn it over to him. Was that the last time you saw it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, that was it. Okay, Billy. That's all I had on my mind. Well, that's all? I mean, no questions about whether I swiped it from the train station or not? Would you tell me if you had? You crazy something? Heck no. After saying goodbye to Jane Higgins and taking a rain check on a dinner invitation for Mrs. Harvey, Owen and I drove back to town. I was tired and I was discouraged, and I needed a good night's sleep, so I had him drop me off at the hotel. At the desk, I found a message to call Long Distance Operator 19. A few minutes later, the call was completed. George Reed speaking. Hi, George. Thought it was you. Johnny, where in blazes have you been? I've been trying to get hold of you all afternoon. Oh, something important? No, I was just curious about the weather down there. Oh, well, it's great, great. Warm, but not too warm. Johnny. And okay, George, what's happened? Well, one of the boys upstairs got wind of that ambergris claim. So? So he just happens to have a friend who's an ichthyologist. Well, bully for him. Well, Johnny, this ichthyologist says that ambergris comes only from the sperm whale. And there has never been a sperm whale alive that would be caught dead swimming in the Gulf of Mexico. What? You follow me, Johnny? I think so. If there's never been a sperm whale in the Gulf, then that stuff you people insured couldn't have been... But, George, if it wasn't ambergris, what was it? I don't know. But unless you find it, we're stuck for 20,000 bucks. Holy smokes. Two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Our flag now numbers 50 stars, 
And behind each star, there stands yet another flag for each of the 50 states. New Mexico's flag is an ancient Zia sun symbol, a red circle on a field of yellow, radiating from four points, which we might indicate as north, east, south, and west, are four parallel lines. Four was a sacred number of Zia, the number most often used by the giver of all good gifts. The earth had four main directions, each with its own gifts. The year had four seasons, each with a different offering for mankind. The day had four phases, sunrise, noontime, evening, and night. Life had its four divisions, childhood, youth, manhood, and old age. Everything in life and nature was bound together in a circle, the circle of life and love, without beginning and without end. And in this great brotherhood of all things, man had four obligations. He must develop a strong body, a clear mind, and a pure spirit. Fourth, and most sacred, he must bear it to the welfare of his people. From this simple symbol, the Zia sun, we read the legend of a wonderful philosophy. The flag's colors of flaming red and golden orange represent the banners of Ferdinand and Isabella, which were carried by Columbus across the Atlantic. New Mexico's state flag, the flag of the 47th state to enter the Union, was adopted on March 19, 1925. Now, Act Two of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar and the Michael Meany Mirage Matter. <laughs> After talking to George Reed and learning that there was considerable doubt in his mind concerning the origin of the ambergris Mike Meany had insured with Reed's company, I called WCO and the agent who had issued the policy to come down to the hotel. He was as shocked and surprised as I'd been. Johnny, I, I just can't believe it. Yeah, well, it's true. At least according to a man who studied the habits of sperm whales for years. Oh, and those kind of whales never come into the Gulf? No, not according to him. What if... Ambergris isn't ambergris. What is it? W.C., your guess is as good as mine. But whatever it is, it isn't worth $20,000. Oh, guess not. Johnny? Yeah? You don't think Mr. Meany's trying to pull a fast one, do you? Trying to defraud the company? Yeah. Oh, no, I, I doubt it. He has all the money he'll need for a while. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, tell me, W.C., did Meany have the ambergris analyzed before he asked you to insure it? Matter of fact, he did. Even showed me a letter which said that the stuff was ambergris. You remember who made the analysis for him? A chemist over uh, Biloxi. Don't recall his name offhand, but he signed that letter he gave Mr. Meany. Uh huh. Okay. First thing in the morning, we'll take another trip out to Meany's place. Good. In the meantime, don't mention any of this to anyone, will no, you? No, 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 I won't. Jerry? Yeah? I should have checked on that chemist, shouldn't I? And, uh, and, and I shouldn't have been so anxious to take Mr. Meany's word. Well, we all make mistakes. Not big ones. Not big ones like this. Johnny, we just got to find that stuff. Because if we don't, we'll never know if it was ambergris or not. Will we? No, W.C., we won't. I felt sorry for Owen. I knew as well as he did that the company might recall his franchise unless we could prove it was ambergris that had been insured. And at the moment, I was quite sure we couldn't do that. The next morning, the coffee shop was crowded, so I started up toward the center of town, looking for another place to have breakfast. I was about four or five blocks from the hotel when I heard someone calling me. Mr. Dollar! Johnny! Hmm? Oh! Oh, yeah. Good morning, Jane. Good morning, yourself. Well, well, what are you doing in town so bright and early? I'm going on a shopping spree. Oh? A girl can't get married in just any old thing, oh, you know? I guess she can't. Oh, oh, well, who's the lucky guy? Well, who do you think? Billy Fisher? I certainly wouldn't marry anyone else. Well, uh, Jane, it's none of my business, but uh, I heard... You heard that my father's dead set against Billy, didn't you? Yeah, something like that. Well, he is. But there isn't much he can do about it. I'm over 18. Besides, he's going to change his mind about Billy. I hope so. Mm. He's going to be real sorry he ever treats Billy the way he has. Uh, Jane, look, I haven't had breakfast yet. How about joining me for a cup of coffee? Oh, I'd love to. Where will we go? Oh, how about over there, the all-night cafe? All right. Oh, no, I mean, I... Do you know what time it is, Mr. Dollar? Mm, just ten after nine. Why? Well, I just remembered something important. I see you later, here. 
I crossed the street and entered the all-night cafe. Behind the counter, wearing a white T-shirt, apron, and a Valentino-type hairdo, was a man about 23 years old. Morning. Will it be? Ham and eggs and coffee. I want them eggs. Over easy. Okay? It's okay with me. I ain't eating them. Two and a half nice with pig. You want your coffee now? Yeah, please. Um, do you happen to know a man named Mike Meany? I should. He's my uncle. Oh, well, then you must be T.J. That's right. Yeah, how come you'd know me? I was talking to your uncle yesterday. My name's Dollar. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he told me if you come around, I should tell you anything you want to know. Well, what happened at the depot that afternoon, T.J.? Didn't he already tell you that? Well, I'd like to hear your side of it. Well, ain't much to tell. I was sitting there waiting to put that box in the 303, and this here gal drove up. Uh-huh. What happened then? Man, she gave me just about the biggest come on I ever did get. So you left the freight platform and crossed the road to talk to her. Well, shoot, Mr. Dollar. I didn't see nothing wrong in doing that. There wasn't nobody around. Oh, there must have been. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon so, but I sure didn't see you. T.J., did that girl tell you her name? Yeah. What is it? Betty Lou Miller. Betty Lou Miller. Yeah. Now, look, mister, I'm busy. No, no, wait. Have you seen her since then? Well, sure. When was that? Well, just now, out in the street. She's a girl you was talking to. I finished my ham and eggs and walked back to the hotel. Owen was waiting for me, but before we drove to Mike Meany's house, we made a stop at the railroad depot. The agent remembered everything that had happened that afternoon, the afternoon the ambergris had been stolen, including the name of the woman who had purchased the Pullman ticket to Memphis at the time of the theft. After thanking Sam for his help, we went on to the Meany place. Come on in. Sit yourself down. Well, thank you, Mr. Meany. Dollar? Dollar, you find my ambergris here? No, sir. Yeah. But I think I know who has it. Who do you mean? You mean you know who stole it from the depot? I think so, Mr. Meany. I'm not sure. Well, boy. Boy, you just let me have their name. Yes, sir. I'll get the sheriff out here and see their foot under the jail. Now, you come on. Tell me. Who did it? No, sir, I'm sorry. I'll tell you when I'm sure and not before. What? Well, when's that going to be? Depends. Depends on what? Whether you'll help me or not. <laughs> Why, you ignorant, stupid Yankee. You know good and well, boy. I'll help you. Yes, sir. Now, I don't know what. What do you want me to do? Give Owen here the letter you received from the chemist that analyzed the emigrants. Is that all? That's all for now. Uh, but, boy, boy, you dollar, where do you think you're going? To see a lady, Mr. Meany. Oh, and I'll call you as soon as I'm sure. Right. Good luck, Johnny. In Owen's car, I drove down the beach to Mrs. Harvey's boarding house. Billy Fisher was out with the boat, so I had plenty of time to tell her what I knew. It's all my fault, Mr. Dollar. I planned the whole thing and put Billy up to it. And bought the Pullman ticket? Yes. I still have it. Been meaning to turn it in for the money, but just haven't had a chance to get down to the depot. Tell me, Mrs. Harvey, how did you know that T.J. would leave the ambergris when he did? Oh, everybody around here knows T.J.'s weakness for girls. One that to me hasn't been locked up long ago. Yeah. Well, it was a beautiful job. You timed it just like a professional. <laughs> I thank you for the compliment. Where was Billy? In the woods on the other side of the railroad track. Uh. He waited till Jane got T.J. all mixed up. Then he scooted across, got the ambergris, and ran back into the tree. And Jane picked him up after leaving the depot? Yes, sir. You care for a cup of coffee, Mr. Dollar? No, no, thanks, Mrs. Harvey. You look so downhearted. <sighs> well, I, I guess that's part of my job, too. What did Billy do with the ambergris? I sent it on to Atlanta. A man there's going to sell it for him. Oh, I see. My, you sure look like you lost your best friend. Yeah, well, I, um, I ran into Jane this morning. She was going shopping for her trousseau. Yes, I know. Mrs. Harvey, if it turns out that that isn't Ambergris... Oh, they'll still get married no matter what, Mr. Dollar. If not now, then don't Dollar! Worry. Dollar! You Yankee schemer! What? Where are you at? What the Dollar? hurt? Miss Harvey! Well, that sounds like Mr. Owen. And my friend, Mr. Meany. Dollar! 
Just what you trying to pull. I tried to keep him from coming over here, Mr. Dollar, but I just couldn't handle him at all. All right, Duffy. It's a long way from being all right. Just what do you want here, Mr. Fat Mike Meany? What do I want, why, woman? I want to arrest you and that dirty, that backbiting, Billy Fisher and his girl were stealing my amber. Amber. Amber grease, that's what I want. Hush. I want to see you in jail. Jail? Don't be ridiculous. Ridiculous? Why, woman? That's uh... what I said. Now, if you don't get off my property... Yeah, but you, woman, you stole. How do you know I stole anything? I know because this here worm of an insurance agent wouldn't have a customer left on the beach unless he told me. Well, he told you wrong. Billy took that amber no. grease. Oh. But it belonged to him all the time. Well, a woman, that's a lie. Ain't know. that right, Mr. Dollar? Yeah, it sure is. At least it is if it was ambergris. It's ambergris right enough. On. Well, I <clears throat> I called that chemist, but he quit his job a couple of days ago. Couldn't find no record he made of it. Don't need no record. It's ambergris, and it's mine. It's Billy. Mine. You think that it's yours, mm. you're seeing a mirage. Tell him, Mr. Dollar. Dollar, if this is some kind of a low-down yank... It's trick. It's no trick, Mr. Meany. Yeah. Mrs. Harvey showed me the contract you have with Bill. Well, what's that got to do with him stealing the ambergris? Just this. This. The contract states that all fish and fish products and byproducts caught or sane while using your boat belong to you. That's right. Exactly right, sir. So, the ambergris doesn't. What? No, sir. Ambergris comes from a whale. And the whale is not a fish. <laughs> It's a mammal. Dollar, dollar, you boy. No, no, wait a minute. Well, doggone. Doggone. They say that young love can work miracles, and I guess it must be true, because later that day, a huge sperm whale was sighted about three miles offshore near the Cat Island Channel. Proving, as I've always said, you can't figure whales any more than you can people. Expense account total, including hotel, bill, and transportation back to Hartford... $420.10. $420.10. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, the wayward truck matter. And I'll leave you to figure that one out for yourself. But join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood. Written by Charles B. Smith and is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Jeanette Nolan, G. Stanley Jones, Junius Matthews, Gil Stratton, Dick Crenna, and John Daner. Musical supervision is by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverly speaking. Johnny Dollar has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.